Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we've been called to Mr. Uh, Ted E. Bear here, who appears to have suffered electrical electrocution injury. Um, he was uh, doing the ironing and um, has electrocuted himself. So his wife found him lying on the ground, semi uh, semi conscious state, um, and called us. We've come in. We've checked, we've made sure we've got our PPE gloves, goggles, masks. Um, and any other PPE we feel appropriate for the situation. We've also say, made sure that the scene is safe. The, um, the iron was disconnected by the wife before we got here, um, and we may even get the electrical, local electrical authority in to, to help us with that if need be. Um, now we're going to do our assessment, our secondary assessment of Mr. Uh, Mr. Bear here. We've already done our rapid trauma survey, and we're moving on to our secondary assessment now. Uh, during that assessment, we're going to be checking for uh, decap ballistic, which is d any deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures or penetrations. Um, we're going to be looking at any burns, especially for electrical, uh, electrical uh, injury, um, any burns, any lacerations, any swelling, any tenderness, any irregularities or any crepitus. Um, and uh, we're also going to do our um, a uh, second set of OBS, we're going to do a basic line of OBS. So at the moment we're going to do his blood pressure, pulse oximetry, check his GCS. Um, uh, we're also going to make sure his pupils are equal and reacting to light. Do his BGL, and we're going to, because it's electrical injury, we'll, probably, we'll do a 12 litre ECG and just make sure there's no uh, arrhythmias or dysrhythmias that come up. So we're going to start with his head. Uh, Mr. Bear's head. So I'm going to have my partner just do some uh, inline spinal immobilisation while we uh, actually clear his C-spine. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is check, it, check his head, just gently feeling around behind his head with my gloves and just check my gloves to make sure there's no blood. There's no boggy masses at the back of his head or anywhere in his, on, his, um, on his skull. Uh, also I'm going to check inside his ears to see if there's any CSF leaks or any blood coming from his ears, uh, same as his nose, any CFS leaks or any blood coming from his nose. Um, I'm then going to uh, look for any uh, raccoon eyes or uh, battle sites which may indicate a base of skull fracture. Having cleared his head, I'm going to move on to his neck now. I'm going to be looking for any C-spine tenderness. So have a gentle feel there. Is there any pain there, Mr. Bear? No, no bear, no pain. Good, good. So checking his C-spine. Also going to check for any raised JVD or jugular vein distension. Um, and uh, any tracheal deviation um, from, say, a, uh, a pneumo or a, a hemothorax, though that, can, that is usually a, lot, a late sign of, of those, those, um, those, that, that issue. Um, so I've checked his neck now. I'm moving down to his chest. I'm going to auscultate his chest in four positions. So one, two, three, four, using my stethoscope, listening for any, say, hyper-resonance, which may, uh, may indicate air um, in his pleural cavity, um, such as a pneumothorax, or any, and a, a dull sound, or a uh, decre decreased sound, may indicate, um, may indicate uh, a hemothorax, blood in his pleural cavity. I'm also going to auscultate one, uh, sorry, do, um, uh, do some, um, uh, some, um, I'm going to thump on his chest and uh, I'm just going to see if I can hear any, again, hyper resonance or any, uh, any hyper resonance or um, dull sounds when I do the um, uh, percussion. I'm going to percuss his chest and check. Um, while, I'm at, while I'm at it, I'll listen to the uh, apex beat, which is mid clavicular line, fifth, uh, between the fifth uh, intercostal space, and just listen to the apex beat, listening for any muffled heart sounds which may indicate a tamponade. Um, uh, any uh, things along those lines. So um, I'm also going to auscultate, listen, to, uh, just feel his chest. Can you take a deep breath for me, Mr. Bear? And while he takes a deep breath, I'm listening for, I'm looking for a seesaw breathing, uneven breathing, any crepitus while he's um, taking a deep breath, um, and uh, basically uh, any any sort of abnormal abnormality there with his with his breathing. Um, at this stage, his chest looks his chest looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now I'm moving down to his abdomen and I'm just feeling his abdomen and saying, can you take it, uh, does this hurt anywhere? Look, looking for any tenderness, any rigidity, uh, or any, um, any, any, you know, any pain anywhere. And whereabouts, it was the upper quadrant, lower quadrant, left or right. So, um, and I felt there, uh, we're pretty happy with that. There's no, no distension, no rigidity and no, uh, no pain. Um, then I'm going to move down to his hips. Now I'm going to be very careful here. I'm going to gently palpate his hips, 
We don't spring the hips anymore, but I'm going to give a gentle palpation of the hips to see if there's any, any um, uh, severe pain on palpation, which could indicate a, uh, 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 an open book or a fractured pelvis, which is, which is quite, uh, quite severe. Uh, a large amount of blood can be lost through that, and we need to be aware of it. Um, so that's, that's uh, we've cleared his, cleared his pelvis. We're checking his legs now. Just making sure, again, looking for a decap ballistic. Also, while we're, while we're down here at the extremities, we're just going to check his, his movement and his sensation. So his muscular, neuromuscular sensation. Um, can you push against my hands? Thank you. And pull against them? Yes. Squeeze my hands. Thank you. Push against them? Thank you. And we're just checking all over the body. Um, we're also going to uh, look at his uh, perineum and his genitalia or genital region just to make sure there's no injuries there. So, um, but obviously that's with, uh, with uh, 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 as much dignity as we can, we can muster in the situation. So, and also looking for prior prison which may indicate a, a spinal injury. Now we're going to soon put um, Mr. Bear onto a spine board. So I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here. Whilst I roll him to put him on the spine board, I'm also going to check his back. Um, that will save double movement and decrease uh, the, the chances of injuring him. So, so while my partner does uh, has a uh, has the uh, has the uh, the neck and is taking care of his spine, um, she's going to be or he is going to be in control of this. And when they're on their core, we're going to roll the patient, lob roll the patient as carefully as possible, and then move him onto the spine board. We've got that set up ready to go. So we move the patient over, one, two, three, rolling over, and I'm just going to feel down his spine again, again looking for anything, looking at his back for any decap ballistics. I'm also going to feel his his um, his buttocks and just make sure there's no abnormalities or uh, or uh, uh, decap ballistic basically uh, abnormalities in his uh, in his back or his, um, his spine or his um, bunks. Uh, we've cleared that, so we're going to roll him onto the C spot, onto the, onto the hard pro onto the board now. Um, we would uh, now apply, um, we'd now uh, look at extrication of this patient. Um, and I've also, I've, I've would also at this stage perhaps uh, look at his GCS, make sure his GCS is, is good or, or ascertain what his GCS is. Um, and go from there basically. Um, I should just mention at this point in time that uh, when we did our um, when we did our spinal, uh, sorry, our pelvic examination, because the, there's so much blood can be lost as, as part of the pelvis, that can actually that becomes part of your circulatory, your ABC, um, and uh, 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 arresting major hemorrhage. So it's a very important point of the part of the the, the assessment. That's Mr. Bear. Thank you very much.